Anyway, she's the gobby one, and we always love having her back on the program. She's with the uh, UK Daily Mail. Katie Hopkins is with us. How are you, Miss Hopkins? I was laughing listening to you. You know, let's uh, spot a tea, and, you know, welcome, welcome, welcome to the program. It's such an Thank honor. You very much indeed. Very much indeed, and, and I can't wait to see you when I go back to London and see Julian Assange again. Yes, and I will come and see you and help you with your English lessons. <laughs> you mean my English accent? Yes, exactly right. I'm going to make you sound like me by the time you return to the States, and then people will think that I've come back disguised you know, it, as Mr. Hannity. It is amazing, Katie Hopkins, the gobby one, how many British people end up on television here in the States, and I think it's because there's just a fixation, fascination with the English accent, and I'm thinking, why not bring Hannity to London and Hannity to Great Britain and let Hannity do a show and then let Hannity get put in jail like, uh, you know, like you would probably be put in jail here. <laughs> Absolutely. There is a thing about the accent, and you can definitely turn it on really easily to get yourself out of sticky situations. So, you know, if I need something really badly, I go very, very British uh, in America, and then people go, oh, I love your accent, and then you get away with stuff. So I definitely use that to my advantage. What is the feeling about Trump in the UK today? Oh, it's just, I, honestly, I am pulling my hair out um, about the whole situation. They are loving it here in the UK. Bear in mind, this is a country that tried to ban Donald Trump, that mocked him endlessly as a candidate when he was running to be president, that said he could never win, that knew for certain he was not going to win. No one in the UK, I think apart from my good self, called it that he was going to win. And of course, they love this. They love the idea that he's going to be impeached. The kind of markets are kind of correcting it, saying, look, there's no way he's going to be impeached. They're not listening. The liberals are celebrating. And of course, naturally, they're attacking me, saying, do you know how much of a dumbass how much of an idiot this makes you look that you're still standing up for Trump. And, and it just frustrates me so much that they can't see the very reason Trump is sitting in the White House is because of these sorts of people, because of the mainstream media, because of the lefty liberals. That's why he's president. And they are carrying on kind of making Trump support base. Kind of It reinforces to me, to others, why he's there, because we need him there to fight back against this kind of mainstream mafia. And the way that they're behaving is just, you know, I personally, if it was my children, I would be sending them to bed with no supper. <laughs> How many kids do you have? So I have three, um, 12, 11, two girls, and then a little boy who's eight. And everyone feels sorry for them. They say, I pity her kids, and I've been reported to social services in case that I'm endangering my children's lives with my opinion. So, yeah, my kids have a pretty... Um, How do you get you know, reported... Tough thing. You told me about this. How do you get reported to social services or children's services just because you have an opinion? I mean, if that's yeah. the case, my kids would have been taken away, you know, 18 and 15 yeah. years ago. Of course, and it's just one of the ways they can try and get you, basically. If someone reports you to social services or child services here, they can report you anonymously. Child services, quite correctly, of course, are obliged to act. They must investigate, but they never at any point have to release the name of the person who reported you, and nor is there any comeback on them for, you know, what I would call wasting time. Um, so, And, you know, it just disappoints me, I suppose, that other people need help, and I'm wasting their time with them being at my house. But my children are kind of used to it, and also they understand some people like mum, some people don't like what mum has to say, and they kind of say, look, it's my mum, I don't control what she says. So they know how to handle it, but um, yes, certainly that's one way of people trying to silence me. Yeah, my kids, I think, I'd tell them the same thing. I don't know, I don't have no idea what my dad says. Who knows? You know, ask yeah, him. Exactly. That's right, call his exactly. show. Talk to him. Um, yeah, well, what? my Do you know, the other day... Go ahead, uh, gobby, gobby one. The day got, oh, sorry, I'm so sorry, there's a slight delay. I'll shut up, you talk. Uh, no, 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 finish your story, you're good. <laughs> The other day, my daughter came home and she said that um, one of her girls, uh, her, her girlfriends at school, had the mother had said, "Oh, you don't want to hang out with that girl because her mom is Katie Hopkins." So that does happen. There is that kind of sense of you never know what you might catch. Like maybe I'm Ebola or something. Well, I've got a story that I can't really go public with now, but I am about to slam a group of people in a town with a school district because it's somewhat similar to what you're describing but I'm, I'm just gonna keep my trap shut now and let the lawyers do their work but when I go public I'm gonna make the they're gonna regret 
the discrimination against me and the right. attacks against me. I can say that uh, because now I'm fighting everybody. I just decided I'm going to go down in my life swinging as hard as I can against everybody that lies, smears, slanders, besmirches me, attacks me, or attacks my family. I'm just not going to take their, their BS. I'm, I'm, I've had it with all of them. And you know what? This is the great thing about the president. I mean, everybody that's writing and calling me today that's worried about it, I'm, like, I'm not worried. I'm not worried one bit. Trump is not going to go down. They're not going to impeach him over what James Comey said to himself after a meeting with Trump as a disgruntled employee who didn't enforce the rule of law and, and have equal application under the law as it relates to Hillary Clinton. It's never going to fly. And so oh, this is a pipe dream. Absolutely. I mean, I, I can't even believe it when you read that stuff and you read, oh, yeah. So I went back to my office, you know, from Comey, and I wrote myself a little note, and that's how we're now going to use that as some kind of evidence, which, frankly, is just bonkers. I think Trump said today in his speech, you know, the more righteous your fight, the more opposition you will face. And I think that's really helpful messaging for everybody. I have been watching uh, and listening, Sean, to the stuff you've been saying about his press briefings, and I, com I agree with you completely. Like, if I could do one thing in that White House, it would be to stop doing what they're doing at the moment, which is essentially like a kind of uh, a, a water fountain, spurting out water all over the place, making glorious rainbows for the mainstream media idiots to kind of glory fly themselves. And, you and say, I would get a great big water cannon and blast them in the face with one message that I want them to hear. Stop answering questions. You see, you're threatening, you're threatening violence with a water gun. I mean, they're going to accuse you of inciting a riot. Or, or violence, and they're going to they're going to go the child oh, services. Yeah. No, will I mean, be back. it's just it's just the kind of a way of demonstrating what I mean. At the minute, there's messaging going out all over the place. What they need is a key message that they deliver consistently in the manner of a water cannon and smack them in the face. I am going to recommend to Katie Hopkins, the gobby one, to be the next press secretary for Donald Trump. I think that might actually be great. <laughs> stay all right, stay right there. I got to ask you about this MI6 situation, and I want to ask you about Julian Assange. <laughs> All right, as we continue, the gobby one from the Daily Mail, our friend Katie Hopkins. And uh, Ms. Hopkins, what do you think and what do the people of Great Britain think of Julian Assange? Well, I think their views on him have kind of changed over time. There was a while we kind of wondered if he was ever going to kind of leave us and do something useful with his life. But now, having seen him in action, having seen the kind of dedication to task that he has, I have a whole new respect for him. And seeing the clip of uh, him commenting on the Seth Rich case, you know, it could not be more clear how well he is he's stating what has gone on with Seth Rich without giving away any of his sources. And I think, you know, it's a real tribute to someone in an age where everyone is endlessly oversharing. He takes you right to that line. He lets you join that final dot. And that is very easy to join up. And it is unbelievable that anyone is swallowing any kind of narrative that Seth Rich has simply gunned down. And oh, no, no, no. Was taken it was him. Katie Hopkins, it is the gobby one. It is a... It is a robbery they just happened to shoot him and they were i guess sure. so excited that phase one of the murder robbery was complete because there's yeah. such evil in the world that they forgot his watch phone wallet and everything else that he had on him they just forgot to finish the robbery yeah they just like didn't get to the second chapter of robberies for dummies so they only got the bit where you shoot the person and run off and risk your own personal freedom for nothing and they never read the second chapter where it actually tells you how to take stuff i am very much reminded of a case here in the uk in 2010 where an mi6 spy gareth edwards was found in a red holdall in a bath padlocked inside no palm prints on the bath no palm prints on the padlock uh, central heating turned up full in the summer didn't turn up to work at mi6 for a week after investigate uh, uh, after sort of probing some stuff on bill clinton he was found dead in that bag and his case was dismissed as a accidental death uh, which is another bonkers thing, and it's got the same kind of fingerprints of deep state all over it. And, and we were supposed to swallow... Say, say, say this again, because like it sounds Seth. exactly like Seth Rich. Explain the details again in, in a little... Sure. So people can hear this. I want them to hear. Yeah, of course. So there's a guy, Gareth... Um, let me just get his right name. Gareth Williams. He was a spy for MI6. He had been in Washington. He worked with the National Security Agency before returning to London. He was uh, sent on active operations for MI6. The exact nature of his work is a, is a secret, a closely guarded secret. But at some point, for, as a favor to a friend, he went on to Bill Clinton's email and he found some guest lists of things that 
Bill Clinton was attending. A short while later, Gareth Williams was found dead in his safe house in London, inside a sports bag, which was padlocked from the outside. There were no handprints on the bar. So, so in no a gym bag, padlocked from the outside, no and, fingerprints. And they said, yet they said that he must have done it himself. The flat was locked from the outside. The heating was turned up full in the middle of summer, so obviously assisting with decomposition. And MI6 were never allowed to be questioned. His agent, Agent G, was never allowed to be questioned about his death because it was seen as inappropriate. And his parents still don't know to this day what happened to him, but they were, they were told accidental death and he probably did it to himself. Mm-hmm. And he padlocked the door on the way out. Oh, uh, well, they padlocked the bag on the inside as well. Yeah. Yeah, and then no, no, he did that, the and then he went back into the bag somehow. He yeah. missed it. Yeah, I get it. Um, yeah. Katie Hopkins, the Gobby one. Uh, <laughs> all right, Gobby one, we love you. Thank you. Okay, love you a lot. Speak to you later. All right, speak to you later.